Hey guys, what's going on? I just finished talking to Radium Engineering earlier today, and uh, they are going to be sending me some new goodies to install in the Skyline. Um, we're getting a new FCST that is specifically designed for people using external fuel pumps or mechanical fuel pumps. Uh, this, as I understand, is going to be a direct replacement for the existing FCST in the car right now. And uh, all of the hard lines that I have and my fuel fill line uh, should mate up to this uh, without requiring any uh, alteration at all. Along with that, they're also sending me a FPRD, which is their fuel pressure regulator and fuel pulse damper unit. Uh, which is combined into one unit. Right now, I'm running two uh, separate units in the car, so I thought this would be kind of an interesting idea to get some of the stuff in the fuel system consolidated, make it a little more simplistic, uh, while I tear all this thing down uh, to perform the upgrades. So I thought I'd just make this quick video, uh, for nothing else, for historical evidence of uh, how the fuel system is set up right now. So I'm going to switch the camera around and we'll take a look. <clears throat> so the car as it sits in its con uh, current condition is running uh, electric fuel pumps. Obviously we're making the switch to mechanical. Uh, I have a lot of different radium parts on here right now as I just discussed. Uh, I'm running their uh, fuel pulse damper. Uh, which is actually something that is commonly overlooked uh, in these engines. And sometimes these things aren't necessarily needed, and other times they're absolutely critical. This uh, probably varies depending on a number of factors, but from what I've seen through my experience, uh, I've, I always run one of these. <clears throat> I had some issues uh, a long time ago with a previous RB25 that um, we were trying to tune this thing. Uh, it didn't have a fuel pulse damper. And we had this flat spot in the fueling, uh, which would go lean, ridiculously lean. I think it was right around 45, 4600 RPM or so. And once you push through that, things would go back to normal. Try to tune this out, try to add fuel. There's nothing that we could do at all. Uh, after a lot of research, found uh, the fuel pulse damper and decided to give it a try. Uh, now, obviously, NEOs do come from the factory with a fuel pulse damper, so uh, scratch your head, there you go. Uh, what these things do is they actually dampen the harmonics that are created by the fuel injectors opening and closing uh, in the fuel. So the fuel will actually have uh, harmonic vibrations. And when the injectors open and close at a certain frequency, uh, at this point that I was experiencing, it was about 45, 4600 RPM, they actually cancel out uh, the fuel pressure and you see something along the lines of like no fuel pressure whatsoever. So what this FPD does is it dampens those uh, and it works fantastic. Uh, also for a little further down the line here we have the um, radium mechanical fuel pressure gauge and in here I have an adapter for our 1 8th MPT um, in line for an electronic uh, fuel pressure sensor for the Haltech ECU and dash <clears throat> along the plasma man billet fuel rail here and then in the back we have mounted their their radium rail mounted fuel pressure regulator this is all um, <clears throat> hooked up right now to the plasma man uh, intake manifold and it's uh, we're running ID 1700 uh, injectors right now Let's see if we can get around here. Uh, further down here, I'm not sure how well you can see this. My lighting is pretty poor right now, but we have a uh, flex fuel uh, sensor in line there uh, going into the return line. <clears throat> so we have an 8N vibrant PTFE feed coming up with full flow uh, fittings everywhere. Uh, and then we have a 6N vibrant PTFE line coming back to the, uh, the flex fuel sensor and then returning back to the tank. So that kind of sums up what's going on in the front of the car. Take a walk around the back. 
inside, obviously, we have the Haltech Elite 2500 tucked in underneath the footwell on the passenger side. And we have the IC7 dash over here, which is, you know, displays lots of nice information about the fuel system. <clears throat> and then here's the trunk. So what I've done here is I've actually replaced the floor in the trunk uh, with a aluminum floor. Uh, and this has been custom fabricated by a, uh, a, a good friend of mine who does fab work. I had him build this to spec. I created a template first out of cardboard and then out of Alumilite, uh, marking how everything was gonna go, making sure that I could take this thing in and out of the car and, um, and, and, and figuring out a way how to fasten it in properly and safely. Uh, so this is a sunken cell. It lowers the, uh, it lowers the, the fuel cell a bit to try to lower our center of gravity. Um, and also I was kind of bent on having the OEM fill position being maintained. So I wanted to have the cell low enough so that we could gravity feed the tank in the OEM spot. So we were able to accomplish that, which is great. Uh, it's an 11 gallon, they call it the spare tire fuel cell. It's meant to more or less fit in the spare tire spots uh, in the trunk of, of most cars. Um, it is universal. So obviously it's not going to fit everything uh, and certain applications, if not most, are going to require custom uh, customization and fabrication. However, that being said, <clears throat> I think it, uh, it performs fantastic. Uh, it, it works and looks nice in here and maintains some space. And as you can see, I've got a lot of usable space down the trunk for some other goodies. We have, you know, the battery back here. We have a Volvo power steering pump. I've got, um, you know, electric uh, for the Relay is set up for the, uh, the all the fuel pump staging. Um, I also have my air cup uh, compressor and tank in here, along with a few other bits. <clears throat> but for right now, just you know, stay focused on the, the fuel system. So inside the tank, right here, this is what uh, is called the FCST. It's the fuel cell surge tank, um, and basically these are like drop-in modules for almost all uh, fuel cells that run this standard size uh, surge tank. So what Radium's done is kind of making, uh, they've made like a like a, a one piece fits all uh, system in here that you can drop into most fuel cells and it is just designed absolutely fantastically. And it comes with a number of accessories or capability to run different accessories, um, including different types of filling. Uh, right now I'm using the remote standard fill. They also have like dry lock fills and, and um, you know, direct fills uh, I'm running there fuel level sensor right there that's hooked up to uh, the Haltech Elite 2500 via their uh, con custom conditioner and then relay that back to the dash as well. You have all your wiring <clears throat> points down here for your pickup, uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, staged fuel pumps. Line set up for the fuel return, uh, the pump out or the feed, and the vent. So inside right now, we have uh, for the pickup uh, a Allbro 525 uh, quote-unquote Hellcat pump, uh, and that feeds the surge tank. Uh, and inside the surge tank, there is three AEM 320s um, staged, uh, with the primary being, uh, you know, the one pump being the primary, which stays on all the time. And then we stage the final two pumps uh, when we reach a certain... Um, you know, RPM and, and boost level. So this whole piece right here will be removed and replaced. Uh, all these lines are going to stay attached, but basically what we're going to see is we're gonna still going to have our pickup, which is going to feed the surge, uh, and then the mechanical pump. Come back around the front of the car. The mechanical pump is going to be mounted right here on the exhaust cam with the new uh, PRP trigger system. And then we're going to go right from here over to the rail, feed the rail, and then it'll return uh, the same way that it does right now. So we're going to have to extend the feed line, bring it around the front of the car into the other side of the uh, mechanical fuel pump. Uh, with this new system in place, uh, I think I said in my previous video, I'm going to need, I'm going to have way more fuel than uh, I could ever need. I, I want to think that this, the Kinsler 700 series pump, uh, supports somewhere in the ballpark of close to 2,000 horsepower 
Um, I might be a little bit off on that, but I'm pretty sure that was the case. Now, obviously, uh, at this current time, I don't really have uh, plans to uh, to see anywhere near that horsepower level, uh, but you always want more uh, than you need when it comes to fuel. So, <clears throat> that being said, um, I'll cut this video short, and we'll come back and we'll do part two for the install. Uh, potentially as soon as this weekend. Thanks a lot, guys.